Well, hey, thank you for being here. I'm Jessica, the Furry Family Coach. I'm just gonna give it a minute to let everybody get in, get um, start watching. Um, if you can hear me, please post in the comments that you can hear me. I wanna make sure that um, I didn't mess anything up and this video is gonna work. Um, all right, so let's get started. In this video, ooh, there we go. In this video, we're talking about um, marking and a little bit about um, potty training and specifically pad training. Um, so I got a question in the group, the Train Positive group. If you're not a member, uh, go ahead and, and uh, request to join. Um, it is uh, the Train Positive group on Facebook and I it's the group I run. So go ahead and, and join if you're not a member and um, we talk about all things dog and cat um, sometimes. Dog training, uh, dog behavior, talk about dog nutrition. Um, but it is a group that is, you know, it's a closed group, so it's a safe place for you to, um, you know, post about your animals and ask questions. Um, yeah, so I got a question in the Train Positive group uh, from Jennifer, and she has a puppy that is marking. And um, I, it seems like she's also having some trouble uh, pad training that same dog. So let's talk a little bit about marking and pad training. So when you when you have a dog, um, both male and female dogs scent mark. But when we're talking about um, marking specifically, like a, a dog raising their leg, that tends to happen in male dogs. Um, and most often it happens in male dogs that are not neutered. Um, because their testo testosterone levels are much higher, so they have that need and that desire um, to mark everything they see as their territory so that other male dogs know that it's his territory. Um, so what can we do if we have a puppy that has already started marking, um, lifting their leg up? And uh, before we get too far into that, Jennifer had also stated that um, she thinks her dog is being mean to her and like going right next to the puppy pad and looking up at her and peeing just off of the puppy pad, like in defiance kind of. It's not something that dogs do. Um, so let's just kind of get that straight real quick. Um, so your dog doesn't have the 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 range to be able to say I'm going to do this out of defiance. So they're doing the best they can with the information that you have provided them so far. So hey guys, thank you so much for joining. Um, but when you have a dog that is marking, especially a puppy, so the very first thing we want to do is make sure that there aren't any medical issues going on, um, and you're, that your vet can check really quick to make sure there's no UTI or anything like that. Um, not as common in males as in females, so that's generally not the case, but we definitely want to make sure that there are no underlying medical concerns before we start any sort of behavioral modification. So the number one thing you can do, whether you have a puppy or an adult dog, whatever it is, the number one thing you can do um, for a dog who is marking is to provide them with more and varied physical and mental um, enrichment. So we want to make sure that your dog is getting plenty of play and exercise. And when you have a puppy, I, a lot of people don't really understand how much they the energy they really have and how much they need to play. I mean, it seems like they need to play all day long sometimes, and that's what they need. Um, they have a ton of energy and they need to get it out. And you also need to provide them with plenty of mental enrichment. Um, so, you know, fun games and activities that you can, you don't even have to buy toys, which of course there are toys and my dog has a ton of them. And, you know, my husband steps on them in the middle of the night and goes, oh my gosh, why does Kim have so many toys? But toys are awesome, but you can also make things um, for your dog and provide mental enrichment. For instance, you can save uh, recycling some cardboard boxes and cardboard, um, even like the toilet paper rolls or the um, paper towel rolls and cut little holes in them that are just big enough for pieces of a treat or pieces of kibble, whatever you're feeding uh, or treating 
to that can fall out of and you know fold in the sides and make that a fun game for your dog you can take um you know uh fleece pieces of fleece or even blankets or towels if you have them and put treats and other items um in between layers of fabrics and let your dog sniff those out so all of these um there are so many different things you can think of to provide mental enrichment to your dog that's the best thing the first thing you can do now if you start noticing behavior um in if you, you start realizing as you pay attention to your dog the little signs and behaviors that your dog um, starts to do before they mark. This is important because you want to make sure that when you notice your dog is just about to mark, um, you want to provide a verbal interrupt. And, and I don't mean yell and scream and um, say mean things, but just some sort of verbal interrupt. And I like, because I'm a positive methods dog trainer, I prefer to, to be more upbeat. And the best way for me to do that and for me to teach other people to do that is to actually use a word that is positive and upbeat. So you can say, play, like, hey, let's play, and use that as a verbal interrupt and then redirect your dog's attention to something else. So we're gonna start um, and, and really give them, you know, a high, something of high value to them that they're like, okay, I don't wanna do this anymore and I do wanna do this. That's how we use rewards to um, modify behavior in our dogs, and it's no different when they're marking. Um, so we want to use a verbal interrupt, and I prefer to use something positive and upbeat, and then redirect their attention to something else that they want to do or, or want to have so that um, you start modifying that behavior that, oh, no, I don't, yeah, I was going to do this, but no, I don't want to do that anymore, and I want you know, to go ahead and play or get this treat or, hey, it's dinner time, whatever it is. Um, so that's that's one thing you can do. It's also important to know that marking is very natural. Now, obviously, we don't like it and we don't want our dogs to do it, but it is a natural behavior. So, um, <laughs> so um, we need to treat it that way. It's not something unnatural that just your dog is doing. This is a very natural thing, so we want to make sure we're um, properly using behavioral positive behavioral modification in our dogs uh, when we do that so um i will say that you know i mentioned before that it, it most often happens in male dogs that are unneutered um and neutering your dog can help but it doesn't always help and i understand that and there are people out there that understand that um, because if, if this is a learned behavior in your dog prior to neutering, it's less likely that the neuter itself is just going to stop your dog from marking. marking. Yes, their testosterone levels are being reduced and that is what was causing them to mark in the first place. Um, so it is possible and it happens often that neutering your dog will um, change that behavior and, and they will no longer want to mark because their testosterone levels have been reduced. But if it's a learned behavior before they are neutered, then you're going to have to really work that much harder at behavior modification um, to make sure that you, you start changing that behavior in your dog. Um, another thing you want to do is um, understand that, especially when marking first starts, um, your dog is going to be marking things that are high value to them. So resources that are high value to them, they're going to be marking maybe their bed or the bed they want to be their bed. Um, toys, possibly the area where they um, are fed or where their water bowl is. And it'll, it just kind of spreads from there. But those are going to be the places, the first places a dog will mark. And of course, they're going to do this um, anywhere they go also. So uh, when, when I was talking earlier about the uh, physical and mental enrichment to, to provide your dog, um, one of the other things you really need to be doing is getting your dog out and walking and going to different places um, so that they become more accustomed to all the different scents in the world. Um, 
Now I understand if you have a dog that is a really young puppy and hasn't yet completed their part of vaccination um, schedule, then that's that's not a possibility. And you wanna focus much more on the physical and mental enrichment inside of your home and you know do this as often as you possibly can. And when you are unable to supervise your dog, you do need to restrict them to an area um, you, you know, whether you set up an X pen or you crate them. Um, and when you are crating your dog, you do want to make sure that you follow the five steps um, to properly crate train your dog. So they associate the crate with a safe space. That's the best way to crate train your dog. Um, and that is something that's available in my online training. Um, but the you, you do want to confine them to a space that is theirs. And so that's kind of going to segue us into the pad training because that was the second part of Jennifer's question was that she's trying to pad train her dog, her puppy, and it doesn't seem to be working out. So the best way, you know, it's, it's a step-by-step -step process, but the best way to train your dog to use puppy pads is going to be to confine them to an area. And I like to use, um, you know, a decent size X pen. Um, if you have to use a crate, use a, a larger crate and set up your um, puppy pads to cover the entire area. Um, and that way they don't have any other option at first. And what you wanna do is as you, when you see them using the bathroom on the pad, you start kind of whispering whatever keyword you wanna use, like go potty or um, that, that's probably the most popular one is go potty, so that they start associating their action of um, elimination with your verbal cue of go potty. So that's that's um, one of the key things. So you wanna watch them. And as they, when they are eliminating, you don't have to yell it and scream it, just start you know, whispering it, go potty, yay, go potty, and reward them for that behavior. Once they do eliminate in the correct spot, which at this point, when you first start out, is gonna be anywhere you have them. Um, and, what, and of course, once they eliminate, if you wanna bring them out and play with them, you're welcome to do so. Just make sure, you you know, when they're unsupervised, you put them back in, in the X pen or the crate, wherever they are, that is covered in the puppy pads. And just start reinforcing that behavior on the puppy pads. And after a few days, um, depending on how young your dog is, but after a few days, you start taking away one pad at a time. And remember when you're doing this that dogs do not like to eliminate near their food and water source. So those are gonna be the first pads that you take away or the ones that are closest to their food and water source. So um, just every few days, take one pad away. And as they start using the other pads, continue to do the same things over and over where you are praising and rewarding. And, and as they are eliminating, use that keyword, go potty or whatever keyword you want to use. Um, so that they start, they are continuing to associate. And as they use the puppy pads and they're not using the areas that you have now removed the puppy pads from, reward them and find whatever your dog's highest value reward is at this point in their lives and it may change. It could be some special treat. It could be a toy. It could be lots of different things. Find their highest value reward and use it because this is one of <clears throat> one of the most important things you're going to teach your dog in their lifetime is where to eliminate um, because obviously we don't want it to be in our house or on our carpets if, if you're using puppy pads inside of the house. And then from there, once they're old enough um, to actually go outside, if you want to then transition them from pad training or from using the pads to going outside, you know, that's also an option, but you just, you gotta stick with it. And um, yeah, so with the marking, we definitely want to, we wanna use that vocal interrupt and we want to provide plenty of mental and physical stimulation. So use the mental and or the vocal interrupt and then redirect their attention to something else, something that they're going to want to do, want to play, want to eat, whatever that may be. And provide plenty of mental and physical stimulation. Um, but of course, make sure before you start out that your dog doesn't have any underlying medical issues. So um, hopefully that answered your two questions, Jennifer. Um, I know that, you know, both of these things, they can be difficult um, and you really need a support. <laughs> you really need support going through them. You need 
um, some positivity. You need somebody in your corner cheering you on. Yes, you can do this and reinforcing and reminding you what to do. Um, so again, if that's you, then go and join the Train Positive group because that's what we're here for is to continue to offer support and reinforcing um, positive reinforcement, positive methods for using uh, training your dog and in, in, um, modifying behaviors when necessary. Um, so guys, if you like this video, if it helped you, please give it a big thumbs up and share. I do have a couple of comments here. Let's see. My feelings, hey, my dogs, my baby is baby. Oh, I started reading this. Now it's one. Okay. So a, a female cat that is marking. And I can't. Let's see if I can see. She was like a good girl. So um, when you have a female cat that's marking, there's so many different things. It sounds like uh, there are three other dogs in the house. So, um when marking occurs again it, it it is more often found in males but um it can happen with females as well and if you've ruled out any underlying medical concerns which of course is what you would do at your vet um if you've ruled out any underlying medical concerns um then you want to start paying attention to paying as close attention as you possibly can to her behaviors um if there are any environmental factors, it sounds, it says you have three little dogs as well as the female cat. Um, so if there are any environmental factors um, that may be affecting your cat, oftentimes when animals are marking, it's because of competition for resources. Um, and that could be something as obvious as food, which I doubt in your case, Tracy, <laughs> that that would be the case, but you never know. It could be something as obvious as food, water, um, a safe place to sleep. Uh, that's important, right? We need, we can't sleep if we are feeling threatened all the time. Makes sense. But it could be something a lot less obvious, like your attention. Um, because if you have, you know, lots of people in the house, lots of animals in the house, one animal could feel like they're not getting the attention they need. Um, and it happens. I mean, we do the best we can, but it does happen. It could be, um, lots of different things. It could be something going on, you know, maybe somebody in the house is really stressed out and that animal is being affected by those emotions. I would actually suggest, because I think Tracy, I've talked to you about this before. Um, I would suggest seeking out um, animalio, essential oils, um, to start diffusing in your home. Um, a lot of times we like to let our animals pick out the essential oil blends that they want. Um, because that, that'll tell us what's going on with them. Um, for example, uh, what I think anybody at Animalio would tell you is to start out with the, uh, cane, uh, I'm sorry, not canine, the feline supportive blend, which, uh, for Animalio is called Kitty Boost. I absolutely love it. And I use it on all of my cats, um, almost every single night. What I do is, um, I have the bottle. And I sit down on the on the floor and all of the cats come around and because I have a multi cat household and I let them all smell the bottle and the ones that are like interested in smelling and maybe even nudging I go ahead and I apply the kitty boost to their back and you can find out information on the Animalio website about how to apply it um, or you can reach out to me. The ones that are like eh, and kind of walk away. Well, that night maybe they don't want or need it, but the next night they're gonna come up to me and they're gonna nudge it, the, the bottle, and they're gonna kind of rub on me and I'm gonna give it to them. That's what we we call self-selecting um, with essential oils. But that was that would be the first thing I would start with your kitty is um, the Kitty Boost. And you can get a, a, a small amount to try it out. They also have a Kitty Boost light that's going to be coming out um, because some some cats may, it may be a little strong for them. Um, but that would be the first thing I would try. And then there are other essential oil blends from there. Um, the reason I always suggest Animalio essential oils is because they are veterinary grade. So they are actually made for use with animals. So you don't have to be scared or worried that they're going to harm your animal in any way. 
Um, and I use them for myself too because I love essential oils. I love um, holistic medicine and I love being able to find natural remedies for things that I may be going through or my animals may be going through. And I know that when I'm using them on myself, I'm not harming my animals. They also are going to get a lot of, um, of the benefits of the oils as well. Uh, for example, I was sick all last week, so I didn't do too many Facebook lives. I was sick all last week and I was in, um, diffusing open air, uh, to help me breathe because I had a cold. And last night, now that I'm getting better, I switched it up and I'm using sunshine in a bottle, which is my absolute favorite, um, because it's such, it's, very citrusy and citrus is my favorite but it's immune boosting so i'm just kind of trying to get my system back up and running the way it's supposed to be so last night i diffused um, sunshine in a bottle so um i would suggest that with your cat it starting um because i i think i've talked to you about this before and everything we went through seemed to be like that's not ticking the box for your cat. Um, so I would definitely suggest checking out Animalio and um, starting with Kitty Boost. So I think we've covered everything in this video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you having, uh, you being here with me and asking questions because that's what I am here for. Um, if you have any other questions, if you're not on here live and you're seeing this later on, if you have any questions, put them in the comment box below. I'll be happy to come back and answer the question for you. Might even do a video about it to answer that question. And um, to get back to the dog issues we were talking about earlier, um, I am a force-free positive methods dog trainer. And every single time I go into somebody's house and I do an introductory visit with them, I have like a foundation of what I start people out with to get everybody on the right path to positive training with your dog. And um, I just put that in an ebook for all of you to be able to access because I can't get into all of your homes. I would love to, but I can't. I'm only one person, right? So the entire foundation of everything I teach every, every one of my in-home clients, and then we work from there, is my seven miracle steps to train your dog Get your copy here, bit.ly slash seven steps dog training. Um, and it is all lowercase, so it's the number seven steps dog training. Um, all lowercase. Go and grab your copy. It's really super, I mean, it's like five bucks. I mean, next to nothing, right? Um, and it's going to give you the entire foundation, everything that I teach all of my in-home clients. You definitely want to get your copy. And again, thank you so much for being here. Um, keep asking those questions and I'll keep making these videos and I will see you in the next video.